In this video, I'm going to show how you can add custom configurations to your design in VMware RE Operations Management Pack Builder, and then how to use that design to in your source and request to change the way that the management pack that is built will collect data. In this case, I'm going to first start off with a, an artificial example. So here we've previously configured our source and we have a base API path of API v1. I'm going to make up a context that I want, in this case, to be able to support the v1 and v2 APIs at the same time with the same API calls. Now, in a lot of cases, this really wouldn't necessarily work if the data formats changed, but uh, we're gonna um, go through the scenario just to show how configurations can be created and we can use them and test them inside the Management Pack Builder. So with this context in mind, we're going to add a new configuration field. And we can either create a basic configuration or an advanced configuration. If you're gonna be setting up adapter instances and pointing them at the same host name, and wanting to change this configuration value to determine the type of data that's collected, that might be more of a basic configuration. If you're only planning to connect to this host name once and the uh, configuration you're, you're um, adding is only gonna change maybe how the data is collected or make sure it collects it correctly, this sounds more like it's going to be an advanced configuration. Um, if you have any questions on if something should or shouldn't be an advanced or basic configuration or any other sort of design questions, you can always post them on our community page and we will be happy to kind of explain or talk through what might be, make the most sense. So in this case though, because I'm just adding a, a configuration to which part of the API we're gonna hit, uh, I'm gonna make this under advanced configuration. And the first step is to decide what the configuration name is going to be. And this name will show up in ARIA operations as the, um, under the advanced section for the, the name of this, this parameter. So here I'm gonna call this API version. And then the next option to choose is what kind of data type. Now there's a big explanation in here for what these all are gonna be, but essentially if you need to be able to type in a specific value and that value could be really anything or too many to really encompass, then text is an appropriate value for that because you'll just type in the value. Um, number, if obviously you need some kind of a number value, and then list is a good option if you have a, a finite number of options that make sense to choose from and you wanna list those. And this will just help make sure that somebody doesn't type uh, the value incorrectly and have to troubleshoot why something's not working the way they expect. Okay, so then after our description, which is just gonna show up as a tooltip in the adapter instance, we're on to the next step. Now this option step will only show up for list style configuration fields. And it's basically specifying what options the user has to select from. So we have to do this in this case, and we'll just add a couple of options. Um, in this case, I'm gonna add V1 and V2. And then the last step, and you'll do this for all configuration parameters, is to find the value and the default value. The value is gonna be what Management Pack Builder uses to test your requests and perform your sample collection. And then the default value is the value that is gonna show up by default when the adapter instance is being configured. In this case, I'm gonna leave them both as V1 um, since both that's really the only way that this particular design is set up to work. Now that you've created the configuration, uh, the next step is to figure out how to go ahead and use that and take advantage of it in your design. So you can use configuration fields inside the source and request portions of the design, and that's what we're gonna do today. So in order to do this, we need to copy the usage of this configuration field. And once we have it copied, we can go and apply it to the place that uh, we wanna take advantage of it. In this case, the source has a base API path configuration field, um, and it's already set to API v1. So we want to make the v1 portion of this dynamic. And it's kind of an artificial, again, example, but just to kind of go through and show how you can use configuration fields in this and how um, you can prove that they're working. So I'm gonna set that there, and now I'm gonna re-request this data. We can see that it has the replacement field um, in the preview URL. We can see that our request works as we as it did previously. 
And if we go over to the log, and this is always another good way to see, verify that um, we're setting in the value that we expect for this request. In this case, I configured it to V1, and I'm seeing that it's still requesting with V1, and I can go ahead and save that. And uh, that's how you can use configuration fields um, in the Management Pack Builder.